and let me give y'all a little intro and off we'll go. Thank you everyone for joining us. Welcome to today's CNCF live webinar, Cloud Native DevOps Security. I'm Libby Schultz and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I'm gonna read our code of conduct and then hand it over to Sebastian Straub and Simon Malott, Solutions Architects with Prisma Cloud by Palo Alto Networks. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you're not able to speak as an attendee. There's a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free, sorry, on the right-hand side of your screen. Please feel free to drop your questions in there and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that Code of Conduct and please be respectful of all of your fellow participants and our presenters. Please also note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF online programs page at community.cncf.io under online programs. And they will also be available via your registration link and on our online programs YouTube playlist. With that, I will hand it over to Sebastian and Simon to kick off today's presentation. Take it away. Thank you, Libby, for your introduction. Thank you, everyone, for joining our webinar today. My name is Sebastian Straube, and I'm the Cloud Solutions Architect um, in Palo Alto Networks. Here I'm sitting in Zurich, Switzerland, and um, I also want to introduce you Simon Melot. He's uh, also Cloud Solutions Architect. Hello, Simon. Hey, hello, Sebastian. Yeah, thank you, Libby, for the introduction. And indeed, I'm a cloud solution architect at Palo Alto Network. So basically, mainly focusing on uh, Prisma Cloud product. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here. I prepare like a nice demo, and I will be jumping into the demo uh, after the presentation of Sebastian. So yeah, over to you, Sebastian. Thank you, Simon. So I'm super happy Simon joined today. He's our demo god, so uh, we all pray to him. So all good. Um, so um, let's uh, quickly start with our presentation. I uh, prepared a couple of slides for us today here to grasp a little bit around uh, what Chekhov is and um, why Chekhov has something to do with cloud native DevOps security. So first thing we, we looked at uh, in, in our um, quick research we did, uh, we looked at public repositories uh, in the Terraform registry and in the GitHub open source code, and we found um, a pretty interesting um, result here. And we, we scanned these um, we scanned these uh, repositories, these uh, open source repositories, and we found that a lot of them were uh, insecure or misconfigured. Uh, misconfiguration is one of our biggest challenges in public cloud environments um, and also in general application uh, development lifecycle security in which we need to think around how we can secure our code, how we can how can we secure our infrastructure. So um, we, we take this away and say, okay, uh, is security checked uh, in by default or how do we think around security? And what uh, I want to present you quickly what Chekhov is. Um, so for the people who don't know actually who, what it is, it's um, Chekhov is an open um, source statistic analysis tool. So it enables us to scan um, infrastructure as code uh, in a methodology that is called policy as code, in which we can actually then um, uh, automatically um, scan code and, and introduce this as uh, scan code into an visibility in which we see vulnerabilities, compliance problems, and best practice problems in our infrastructure as code templates. In uh, Chekhov, we uh, pre-built hundreds of policies um, over our compliance and best practices across all the public cloud provider. So when we create an infrastructure as code template for AWS, Azure, Google, and also Kubernetes uh, templates like Helm charts, et cetera, um, we actually can use them and uh, scan them with Chekhov. And then this scan will show us the vulnerability and compliance issues inside this code. Uh, in the moment, we are around uh, 2 million downloads with Chekhov. So it's a very popular infrastructure as code scanner in the moment on the market. Um, we are uh, natively supporting, uh, as I said before, also um, Kubernetes manifest, but also Terraform CloudFormation. 
the uh, ARM uh, and others. Um, and also um, what I want to highlight here is that Chekhov is written in Python. So it's fu fully extensible. Um, if you want to use the source code and want to extend some functions, uh, if you're a Python pro, you ex absolutely are in the way to do so. Um, so it's a very simple, flexible tool. Um, where we actually can control policies and uh, um, enforce um, that we can use our code. So as we said before, Simon is actually um, uh, doing the demo uh, after I showed a couple of slides. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to check out, uh, you can go to this uh, URL and can check the code. Um, but I just want to give you a couple of more um, uh, context around this product. When you have checked uh, um, your software development lifecycle and you know you need to check every corner of your code and uh, of your um, infrastructure's code templates, et cetera. Um, so our, our approach here is that we actually try to, to find um, these vulnerabilities and compliance issues. Um, we want to fix them so we can fix them directly in the EDA. Uh, like for example, Visual Studio Code. Uh, we have uh, plugins for all the major um, development environments in the market, and we also want pr want to prevent that these problems are going into production environments. But we can also fix problems inside production environments. Um, so we can fix problems also at build time. So that means we can uh, integrate um, our uh, scans into the build time uh, and into the runtime. So in production, in in um, running environments and in our CACD pipeline. Uh, as we said before, it's an open source product. Um, um, and we also, um, for example, can merge um, pull requests um, and we can uh, detect and uh, transform misconfigurations. That's a very important point. Um, and also we uh, enforce our policies um, in your workflow. So how does it work actually? Um, the, this is the challenge actually with, with our code because today um, we have the topic uh, shift left. That is very important to us um, because we want to automate our um, code and our security of the code in our development uh, environment and not in the production environment. Because here on this slide, we see that for example, we, we have one misconfiguration and vulnerable code into our build pipeline and then we deploy this um, template maybe 100 times or more and then we create actually in runtime a lot of security alerts in production environment and all this whole shift left topic is around reducing the security alerts in production environments um, without creating you know tickets uh, in Jira, um, PagerDuty or ServiceNow and then actually need to come back into the build process, change, and then deploy again. So we want to fix the problem in the beginning. Um, and how, how do we handle this? So uh, let's handle this like, like pros, and um, we want to show you how this works. So what we do is actually when we, um, when we do some code uh, commit, we want to fix and uh, prevent in, in the development environment uh, and pull requests and build, uh, build blocks um, uh, that some vulnerabilities are going into the test environment, for example. And then also in the deployment operation state, we monitor and we can remediate in, in the stage. Um, and what we also do before we actually commit this code, we scan these infrastructure templates um, and also um, make sure that this configuration uh, meets the requirements of your um, of your department and what we also do is we we then show some compliance reports policy engines and show also some notifications around this topic um, so we can integrate in your whole uh, CSD pipeline in your workflow that you work every day and we make it easy for you to integrate uh, on scan uh, this whole different uh, repositories and uh, templates with what do we integrate? It's a very important question because um, we don't want to write these integrations by ourselves, right? So you see a lot of logos. Uh, I don't need to describe every logo. I think you all know what they are and uh, where they're coming from. But um, what I want to highlight here is that we support all the major cloud provider, uh, including Kubernetes here, um, and then also integrate with the typical 
development environment, including GitHub Actions, GitLab, um, and also Jenkins, uh, including also instant messaging um, um, uh, alerts and um, communications. And also, you also inter integrate in infrastructure as code frameworks uh, like Terraform and Helm. Um, so, so this is absolutely a great starting point for you. What's the benefit? Uh, very quickly. So actually, over time, when you using this um, uh, kind of methodology in, in the uh, checkoff tool, you lower the remediation time. Um, this is um, really interesting because at the end, you don't want to fix the problems in production, right? And then you want to uh, decrease the uh, high severity events. That means that we find vulnerability problems um, inside the app and reduce the attack surface from the beginning. Uh, we, we simplify the compliance by checking compliance inside the template already. Uh, and then um, by, at the end, what we do is with all this combined together, we are minimizing the attack surface. So what are actually the uh, requirements when we look at how to achieve these benefits? And these requirements are that we need actually uh, these infrastructures code security um, a tool where we uh, implement some guardrails. Uh, we need drift detection. Drift detection means that we automate um, the uh, deployment of the, uh, um, the of the code um, with the template. Uh, we checking the template before deploying, and then when we change something something inside the cloud, some resources are changed inside the cloud. We detect this change and then we, we um, notify on this change uh, and also um, scan scan this change. Then, for example, what you also need to implement is a secret scanning. So we want to make sure that we don't deploy or commit secrets into our uh, production stage or into other stages. Um, that's something we really want to avoid. And then for sure, what's very important is the least privilege uh, in identity access management. So that means you don't want to um, overprivilege uh, some user that have access to environments. So we also check this one. So one uh, um, thing I wanted to show you is the box ticker. So Chekhov is an uh, upstream uh, tool. So there's also a downstream tool um, for enterprise environments. Uh, and um, maybe later you can check out what kind of functionality you need. But if you need some specific functionality, then you can also check out the downstream tool. So before we going into the demo, um, I just want to give you a glimpse around our approach and um, how we tackle today's security situations. What is actually the situation? Um, we are not only looking at um, our uh, security of the code, but the security of our whole environment. And that includes a lot of different uh, aspects. And when we look at these different aspects, uh, we actually see that, for example, Gartner give us some trends in uh, strategic technologies, uh, which customers are looking at. And um, we want to understand in which way we, for example, understand cybersecurity measures and how we can do hyper automation um, on, the, uh, on the right side here. And we also want to understand how to do uh, uh, data loss prevention, uh, data classification, and also looking at workload protection, security posture management, all those kind of topics to come then together in the dashboard to have a centralized poly policy and posture management. So we emphasize here um, for, for um, customers that they actually introducing some kind of cloud native application platform approach. Um, and this CNAP uh, enables IT leader actually to laser focus on shift left. So bringing or, or removing the problems out of the production environment, bringing, uh, solving the problems inside the development lifecycle, um, then also optimizing the deployment time and integrating security in the DevOps processes, uh, reducing the application downtime for break fix procedures, reducing security alerts and false positives in SOCs, also very important. Um, because it takes a lot of money and time to solve them in production environment. Um, we also increase the uh, agility and resilience, and also we enable uh, centralized management and dashboards and consolidate the tool landscape. So this CNAP approach is something we uh, really can recommend. But now let's uh, focus on the demo. So Simon, um, I would like to um, take over my screen. And, and I would start, start sharing mine. 
thank you, Sebastian, for the presentation. And uh, let me hide uh, this one. So yeah, basically, what I want to, to show you like today is how to get started also with uh, Chekhov. And uh, the first uh, stuff that you, uh, you need to do uh, that you need to do is like install uh, Chekhov on your uh, laptop, computer, whatever. Uh, so just by doing like a pip3 uh, install Chekhov, and uh, that would be sufficient to get like a Chekhov on your uh, on your computer. And then as of that, you can uh, run uh, this kind of command, uh, Chekhov minus L, uh, just to list uh, all the policy that we have like embedded inside uh, Chekhov. And then you are, if you want to scan a specific file, you can just minus F uh, Docker file from Apple. It will scan uh, Docker file. And here on the on the right side of the screen, we can see like uh, uh, the fact that I have scanned a directory which contains a couple of like Terraform template whatsoever. Uh, but uh, that's uh, the output you will get uh, with the CLI. Uh, so if you want to do this, uh, you you have the the command line which is here. It's minus D like directory and uh, you have to specify uh, the uh, a directory. Here is like the current one. And of course, uh, there is sometimes like a policy that could be like uh, not uh, very interesting for you in your uh, situation. So it's what we could call like a false positive. For example, you want to publish an uh, AWS S3 bucket on internet, and uh, yeah, you uh, you need. Uh, Fine. It's normal that it's uh, publicly available, so you don't want to get, uh, you don't want to fail a pipeline because of that. So you can skip some check, of course. And the other solution is to uh, to check. Uh, if you do dash dash check, that will specify uh, only the check that you want to uh, uh, to do. So, for example, now if we go back, if we go to the demo, here I'm I'm in a directory where I have like a, a small Python application. I hope it's big enough for you guys, or maybe I can zoom it a bit. Um, so uh, in this, uh, I have like a Python application with like a requirement to stay here, and I have a Docker file. So for example, if I do like check off minus F Docker file, the command that we just saw in the slide, it will scan the Docker file, and will give you like some kind of recommendation. So for example, here you have the CKV, uh, this uh, policy from Chekhov, which is ensure that uh, that a user for the container has been created. If it's not the case, because here it was not the case, uh, but then that means you need to uh, to do some extra, uh, to, to, to add a user inside your Docker file, for example, or to, for example, this one, add an L check. For example, what I could do is like skip uh, check and just to make it uh, correct. So let's do like that and then comma CKV Docker 2. And yeah, I don't need to put a space here. And here that will give you only uh, the, um, uh, the correct, uh, the check which was uh, correct before. And that would assume that those two check uh, they are failing, but uh, you assume that is like false positive for your opponent. Uh, before to continue, there is also like a, a command, uh, which is like check off minus L, uh, that li will list all the policy that we have. And for example, here you can see that, uh, for example, with uh, this kind of uh, uh, check off policy, we'll check all the AWS access keys. So for example, if we find inside the file, uh, uh, AWS access key, uh, it will uh, create an alert and, uh, for example, it could block the pipeline and uh, and this kind of stuff. So you could really uh, try to limit uh, the fact that the, the access keys uh, is published uh, publicly or this kind of stuff. That's a bit the idea. Then, uh, and I think, I don't know if I do uh, something like that, I get, I think we have had it like last week or like uh, something about log for G, for J. Um, yeah, that was an exclamation, exclamation mark here. Where is my type? Yeah, sorry for that. Um, so yeah, so for example, last week we have added like uh, two uh, policies uh, for the log4j uh, finality that has been discovered. 
And basically, this one is just uh, ensure that WAF uh, prevent message lookup in log4g2. So uh, it's related to the CVD that has been released. So, and for example, here we, we can see that this one is for uh, cloud formation. So the type of the policy is for cloud formation. And this one is for Terraform. So we have like two policies which are checking the template for cloud formation and making sure that log4g is enabled on a, a web application firewall of AWS. All right. So that's kind of stuff we can do. And then, of course, uh, if I do like check off minus D and current directory, it will scan all, uh, all the current directory and uh, doing some recommendation on the uh, yeah, here, here in this CLI in this uh, principle. So, but here we have like a Docker file, but for example, I had also in my repository some Kubernetes definition. Like uh, this one was to deploy the Python application I, will, I just show you. And uh, for example, you, you should minimize uh, admission of root containers and, and stuff like that. So we were, and of course, each time you have like some uh, recommendation that you have here and, and the guide also to help you. So if you click on it, you get uh, like a documentation with all the CKV uh, ID. And we have also the bridge rule, but uh, here is, we are talking about uh, Chekhov. And uh, here you get like uh, the uh, what you should do in your uh, Kubernetes definition uh, to deploy this application and to make sure that uh, run, run as non-root uh, should be equal to true, for example. This kind of stuff. And then it's like much easier to, uh, to fix uh, your, um, uh, by your, your different configuration files. All right. So uh, that's about like um, Chekhov in itself. So the policies and, and so on. And I remember if you want to test it, it's like, uh, like open source, of course. Uh, and if you want to test it, it's like as simple as uh, this set of commands it's really quick and of course you have a help so that dash dash help that will provide like all the uh the, the help in regards of the cli of Chekhov that you can use then if we want to integrate this in a ci cd pipeline there is already uh, maybe first step is uh install the Chekhov extension into uh, vs code or mtbj uh there is uh, and then I will show you in this demo, like uh, an Azure DevOps pipeline where I do a validation. So I will scan first the external module of that I'm using in a Terraform template. Then I will scan the Terraform template itself, which is deploying a Kubernetes cluster and a virtual machine on uh, Azure. And then the, I will publish the report uh, in a G-unit format inside uh, Azure DevOps. And I do that, I can do the same kind of um, uh, inside uh, Azure DevOps, uh, this CLI output, but uh, with the GE unit is much like uh, cleaner and easy to browse if uh, not everybody is like technical to go in the uh, in a different step of um, Azure DevOps pipeline, then it's like better uh, published. And I, I will show you that also. Uh, then we have like uh, the second stage of the, the pipeline will be a plan and then there we will uh, do a terraform uh, plan command and we will output the format into like a, a main.json like a, a json file and then with checkoff we will verify the plan uh, in json so that's the idea is that you can have like different here i do it everything in once but the idea is that you can have like different pipeline that generate a, a json file and then the json is sent to a different pipeline and stuff like that and then I have a stage which is like, uh, yeah, I approve the change or I don't approve. And then we apply the configuration. So uh, we do Terraform apply and it executes the Terraform template against uh, uh, Azure and it creates like the Kubernetes cluster, the container registry and the virtual machine uh, that we need. And in bonus, but I'm not sure we have the time. We'll see how it goes, the demo. And uh, Sebastian put the enough pressure on me uh, as a god of demo, but uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But that's uh, the idea. Then I have also some example in regards of the GitHub action. Uh, so uh, yeah, but basically can everywhere you can run uh, Python 
you can run Chekhov. That's the ID. Uh, so that means you can integrate more or less everywhere that you want. Uh, it's just that, for example, GitHub Action, we have like a super easy integration. Uh, Azure DevOps is a bit less easy, uh, uh, but yeah, you will see. I, I will go through all that uh, during the demo. All right, so now I will change of terminal. I'm here in Azure DevOps in my repository, and here I have a couple of files. Let me zoom in a bit. Uh, so I have my Azure pipeline. We'll go through it uh, in, in, uh, like in a second phase. Uh, and then I have like um, here an AKS uh, file uh, that I'm using, uh, which is uh, to deploy the Azure Kubernetes services on Azure. And here I have also the module.tf, which is using an external module. And I will scan the external module with Chekhov. So for example, here, if I do like, like we did before, Chekhov minus D, current directory, it will scan the direct, uh, directory and give you the um, uh, everything which is uh, not non-compliant to the policy that we have. And if I go up, we have like uh, six uh, checked which are failed, uh, three that we skipped. And basically that's uh, a way of avoiding the fact that we want to uh, like a, a false positive. So we skip some check uh, inside, the, inside the code. I will show you that later. And we have three check that has uh, passed. So if we go through them, for example, we we'll see that on the AKS file, uh, there is uh, some ensure that AKS enable private cluster. And I will go back, I will go to the, uh, to the VS code, and here I have the extension, which is uh, Chekhov. So let me grab it for you. And I forgot the key. So this is uh, the Chekhov extension, you just uh, search for it, you install it, and uh, that would be uh, sufficient uh, to run. So once it is installed, it integrates super uh, smoothly inside uh, uh, inside uh, VS Code. So the ID, and then let me remove it. Uh, uh, maybe I can zoom it a bit. Yeah, that's better. Uh, and here, what you have is basically when and you will see, uh, I will change some configuration. I will hit uh, save button and you see that Chekhov is running already to scan uh, the different resources of this file. So now you see that here I'm creating a container registry. Here I'm creating a Kubernetes cluster, Azure Kubernetes cluster, and here I do the whole assignment for the uh, to give the permission of Kubernetes cluster to pull uh, container images from the container registry, of course. And here you can see that this one is in red, and that means Chekhov discovered some misconfiguration there. And for example, here we can see that uh, ensure that AKS enable private cluster, what we just saw in the CLI. So it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same output that we see. Uh, once you uh, you see that, then you you have a button which is here, which is quick fix. What you can do there is either you apply a skip. Uh, you generate a skip command to avoid to, to, to mention is uh, the fact that it's like a false positive, for example. And uh, or for example, what we, what we could do is also, uh, for example, ensure that AKS, uh, AKS has an API server authorized range IP. And here, if I go to the quick fix for that one, I don't have something like apply fix, which is out of the box from the VS code extension, it will provide me like a suggestion. So and I can only generate a skip comment, but I don't want that. I, I want to fix that issue because I want to, uh, I have a range IP that I want, uh, and I want to allow only this range IP to access my uh, community cluster. So what you should do is you click on the link. And once you are here, you see that you should just add uh, this uh, this range. So let's do something like that. Let's copy the base, uh, that uh, rule, or we put it in front of the tag. And here we have something. And uh, let's say that my IP is a public IP, so 117, 82, something, and slash 24. Let's, let's save. 
And again, Chekhov is running. So this, uh, this check should be like, uh, okay, no. Okay, so we just have seen that, okay. Uh, let me remove it again. Oh, I will save it again. And once it's done, I will show you also another way to do it. So here we have the, the checkoff that has uh, several fade options. So if I go here in the quick uh, fix, oh, yeah, sorry. You can also apply the fix directly from the CLI. So here is like ensure logging, uh, Azure maintaining is configured. And then it will add this uh, profile uh, stuff. So then we can uh, fix the other option uh, just by doing this uh, quick fix, generate and skip comment. Um, yeah, that's a bit, let me grab this one and I will add this one up like this. All right. And I will generate uh, the other command just to make sure that uh, it goes okay. And then I will push the change into the pipeline and uh, we'll see how it goes over there. So now I have like a Kubernetes command and here I can uh, use the quick fix to apply the fix for the airbag, for example. And this will add the airbag as well. And I will take this like that. Oh, I, I will check quickly if the uh, ID the integration. So, and now I can also like a uh, quick fix, uh, ensure that enables private cluster, for example, and then we have all that, which is fine. All right. And then I will, I will add also the last one and it should be all right. And this is like the skip command. And if you have like a skip command, you can use, you have to use this, in, uh, this syntax, which is like a check off uh, and then skip equal the check off ID. And that you have it, of course, everywhere. Like for example, this is the check off ID. And then basically you just add uh, like a double point and then you put whatever command you want. For, it could be like anything. Uh, so, and for example, I will Azure policy add on. Oh, no, that was not one. Oh, sorry. This one. Uh, yeah. Oh, quick fix. Yeah, uh, I think this is the one I didn't enable yet. So, okay. Sorry. Okay, I have to generate. Uh, so now check off is running again for the, the last comment and I lost uh, like Windows V somewhere. Yeah, I do. Okay. So I have uh, this add-on profile is twice, so I can remove this one. So, and this is uh, what Chekhov does. It's really giving you like recommendation on the uh, on the developer seat, what you should do to improve your uh, your code before uh, pushing it in production. So now Chekhov is running and uh, we, we'll see uh, how it goes. If we have a, a green mark, that means uh, Chekhov does, does not have any recommendation anymore. Then we can push uh, the change uh, to the pipeline. And in regards of the pipeline, what we do here, and I will come back to that. Uh, so we'll trigger the pipeline, and this is for Azure DevOps, of course, but uh, we'll trigger the pipeline on the master branch. And then, uh, yeah, we are using Ubuntu, so we will install uh, uh, Chekhov by, do, uh, by uh, doing this command, uh, pip install uh, Chekhov. Then we will, initialize the Terraform and we'll give like a couple of uh, information in regard of the backend. So the backend is safe on the Azure side. And then we will validate the configuration of the Terraform. And then we'll check here with check off the current directory or the, the set module. Uh, so we'll, we'll skip also all the check which, which is in regard of uh, Docker. 
and the output will be sent to uh, with the format of GeoNet XML, and it will be sent to a specific file. Then data will use that file to publish inside uh, Azure DevOps. That's a bit the idea. And then once the module are okay, we will verify uh, the main file. So, uh, so the Terraform template, which is the AKS uh, Terraform and all the files that we have seen uh, before. And then we publish also those results. And then we have the plan and the plan is also has to initialize because it's like a different uh, virtual machine, a different stage. So we have to install again the Chekhov. Uh, then we have to initialize the Terraform template and then we have to execute the plan. And here in the plan, you can see that now uh, we are, we will show the plan and we'll output inside uh, a main.json that will be scanned with the checkoff-f command. And then we will also output that command, uh, that, uh, uh, that command, well, yeah, the output will uh, in G you need uh, XML as well. And then we will uh, send the output in that specific file. And then, of course, here we have all the parameters to, uh, to go against the, um, uh, the Azure environment that we have. And here we have the publish uh, test result. So we will, we will publish the checkoff plan report uh, that you can see here. All right. And then we have the approve stage and we have the apply. The apply again, we have to initialize and then just execute the uh, uh, Terraform apply auto approve command. All right, so I think uh, that would be it in regard of the explanation. And then uh, let me first check all if I don't have any uh, exception anymore in my file here. And I see that SSH accelerated. Okay, so I have like, I, I, yeah, that's one of the models I'm using inside the model.tf. And it, uh, it tells me ensure that SSH access is uh, restricted from the internet. So I should either uh, deny the access, either uh, add a specific port, a specific range. So what I will do, and here it is. Uh, this is the model.tf. I will just deny uh, this action. So not, I don't want to allow SSH from uh, directly from all the internet to my uh, uh, to my virtual machine. So let's do a check of minus D again, it's checking everything. And so we have like, you know, skip check one, uh, but we don't have any fade checks. So now I'm safe to push. So I will push the, uh, the, the change I have made, fix uh, check off uh, uh, issue or oh, recommendation. It's not an issue, it's recommendation. Uh, okay, let's push it like that. And now that should have triggered like a pipeline on Azure DevOps. And this is my pipeline, which is out not failing yet. Yeah, this is the one. So it's running here and it will go through the different stage I, I just explained. So we have the validate, the plan, the wait for approval and the apply. So job is pending. Let's see how it goes here. So it will install the checkoff huh, with the uh, pipe pipe three installed checkoff, and then yeah, checkoff should be installed at the end. So successfully uh, date. It will initialize the Terraform. So we'll check also uh, with the. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> What's going on? Init fade code one. Um, yeah, we, uh, validate config, uh, publish. Uh, Hi, Simon. Um, <laughs> can you maybe um, zoom in a little bit? So uh, yeah. the text is very small. Mm -hmm. But wait, here I have like an invalid character on IKS line 38. Ah, I think it's the recognition from here. It should be like something. All right, so fixing typo. So <laughs> we'll fix the, I think this is 938. Okay, so let's push the change again. Um, check off recommendation V1. Uh, 
Um, yeah, is it okay now for you guys? Yeah, Sebastian. Oh, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's go back to the validate option. So we have to wait again. Sorry for that. So side note for me is to fix uh, this. It should be like a double quote and not simple quote in the in the copy in the documentation. So let's wait a bit. So it's running like uh, again installing Chekhov. Then it will initialize the Terraform, validate the configuration of the Terraform template, and then it will check the modules because I have one module and I didn't uh, show you uh, that much yet. But this is uh, how to uh, to create uh, the network. So it's provided by uh, Azure. And uh, the, to create a VNet, providing like couple of name and uh, and doing some fire tag, fire, the cost center for CNCF. Uh, this is on you guys. Um, okay, so my <laughs> config is still not valid. So uh, validate say exit code one. Oh my god! But so let's. Validate fleet with exit code one. Not really. Yeah, if anybody see the, the, the error, just hit me. Um, otherwise, I need I will or I will do something else. Uh, just for the sake of the demo, to uh, to, to be able to uh, to go uh, till the, uh, the end, I will save this configuration. Um, I will see. And here I have the filling, and then I will quick fix, and I will generate a skip command for that. So demo fail because of you. So let's save like that. I will push the change uh, fix uh, issue with uh, API. All right, IP. All right, so let's push it like that. And now we go back to the pipeline for the, for the last time, I hope. Uh, and then it should be all right. So let's see how it goes now. Yeah, of course, we have to go through that, all that again. But yeah, it's, it's going to take like a couple of seconds. All right. And, but I wonder, like, yeah, well, yeah, for the time being, like, uh, let me go back to that because I'm not sure to understand why uh, the mistake was on the failed and appropriate when you device set off. Ah, yeah, I think it's like, uh, it needs like um, an array. So yeah, we might, uh, instead of, uh, of this, okay. But anyway, we, we can fix it later, I'm sure. So here we have the validate option, and yeah, now the validate uh, validation goes to, uh, through, and you can see that I have checked the module, which are okay, and now I have the main file, which is exiting with one and finishing blah blah blah. So it failed the pipeline, and now we can go here in the pipeline. We see on the last instance here, and we can go in test, and here we have the full report which is ensure that AKS add-on add -on cluster, blah, 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 ensure that AKS uses Azure poli uh, policies add-on Azure RM Kubernetes cluster AKS. So we can see like which pipeline has failed, uh, which action has failed, and we can also see all the past actions. So if I clear all that, then you have a list of all the policies that have been checked and which one have been failing. So for example, here I have the CKV, this one, which is failing. So, and here I can go, when I go to the, this, uh, fire, uh, I will go to that uh, website and see what is the recommendation from which one. And here, basically, they just said that I should enable this. I, I thought I have done it, but let's go back here. And add-on profile OMS Azure policy, yeah. I should basically add just this here. Okay, so let's 
Okay, that will take some time. Enable equal to, and then I can remove uh, this. Okay. So. Oh my. Okay. All right. So that, let's do like this. And yeah, I have something like that. So let's fix the Terraform uh, format. Yeah. Yeah, that seems all right to me. And now we can push uh, the change with Azure Policy, which is enabled. Enable Azure Policy. And that's a bit uh, what we are, uh, so, yeah, what I was uh, wanted to show you. It was also we can fail the pipeline in regards of the configuration that we have uh, done. And then uh, now I'm running a new pipeline uh, with a change I just committed. So let's go here for the last pipeline. And let's wait a bit for the, uh, the fact that he installed a checkoff and initialized the Terraform. Yeah, this is always uh, a bit painful to wait for the uh, all those uh, tests to be applied. But uh, yeah, that's uh, the live demo, right? Uh, we need to, to be a bit patient. And so now uh, the, the, the different steps are successful. And now I will go to the plan. And I, like I mentioned before, in, inside the pipeline, in the plan, so we will generate uh, here the Terraform plan. We will output the configuration to a specific uh, TF plan uh, file, which is the main. And then we'll use that file uh, with the checkoff CLI here. To, uh, yeah, basically we'll show the, the JSON first, we'll convert the TF plan in JSON, and, uh, and then we'll scan the JSON file with uh, the checkoff, okay? And that's what we do over here. So initialize Terraform again, and then it should uh, go through. Which is kind of, yeah, which, is, which could be interesting as well, is that you have like some, like a lot of information here in the test plan. Uh, when you go to the ones, I think, and I will open it in different tab, and I will show you that uh, just right after. Uh, but, or oh, I can show you, and that was the one, yeah, we don't have any fail. So if you double click here, you have also this kind of uh, a diagram, and you know that you have eight check which are passed, four that have uh, not been executed. So that means uh, those are the, the uh, the different check from checkoff I did and I uh, the one that I uh, I passed for the one I, I skip basically okay so now if I go back to the pipeline yeah okay still uh, doing the terraform plan and yeah that's terraform taking some time for that but uh, yeah but otherwise yeah I think We'll go like, uh, maybe I can show you like very quickly on the Terraform, uh, yeah, there is the checkoff website here that you can uh, visit and uh, I share the link uh, the, in, the, in the chat. Uh, so you can also go there and create some custom uh, policies if you want to. Uh, and otherwise, just to show you like in a couple of lines how to do the integration with, um, uh, with GitHub Action and here if I have my Terraform. Uh, Basically, that's how you should do. So you should set up uh, Python 3.a, and then you can, uh, with uh, the checkoff action, you can uh, just pass a couple of parameters that you want. And here you have the, the different option that we have seen 
into the CLI. You have them also. Hey, Simon, the... uh, the, uh, sh very sorry. <laughs> can, can you zoom in again, please? <laughs> ah, yeah. It's, it's hard to read. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, Thank sorry. you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, too big screen for me. Uh, yeah, so basically, yeah, what I was saying is like we set up the 3.8 Python environment and then we can uh, use the checkoff action, uh, which is out of the box file. You can just use the, like this. And then uh, you give like a couple of parameter, uh, parameters uh, to skip some check if you don't want to skip some check. Uh, and you can use Wildcard here, right? So you can, for example, uh, if you don't want to scan, uh, to check anything, which is AWS, you can do C uh, CTV underscore AWS uh, star, and it will skip all that. Then you have the quiet option, you have the soft face. So for example, if you want to make sure that the pipeline goes all fine, uh, goes okay, uh, even if you have like fade check, then you just set it true and uh, it will uh, it, it will allow and it will, it will return uh, a zero to the, the, the command instead of one in case of failure. Then you have to specify the, uh, the framework that you are using or, and the output that you want and so on. And then we can, in that way, we can also in GitHub, if I come back here in action. Simon, just a quick reminder, we have five minutes left. Thank you. Yeah, sure. I'm almost done. And here we have like uh, also this kind of report that you have, which are a bit less sexy than the, uh, Azure DevOps, so that's why I spend mo most of my time on Azure DevOps. But uh, yeah, uh, basically that's all I wanted to show you. And if I come back here on the checkoff, here I have the branch and here you have the test. And this is uh, what I wanted to show you today. So yeah, if, if there is any question, please use the, the chat uh, for Q&A box that you have like uh, in the bottom right of the of the screen, if I remember correctly. And uh, yeah, I don't know if there is any question. Yeah, we had a couple of questions. Um, I tried to answer them already. Um, so we had some questions around the um, documentation where we can find uh, learning, um, learning content. Um, then we had um, some questions around how we create this uh, uh, check of uh, policies. Um, I answered them by um, using, uh, uh, you know, using the open source pull requests to create new content and also it's um, um, managed by the product management. So uh, when we see new vulnerabilities coming up, then we integrate them uh, into the latest version. Um, and um, yeah, maybe um, uh, Simon, when, when, you know, from your perspective, when we look at the demo and you know um, what we can achieve, what great results here, including them in the CICD pipeline, um, what is the best starting point that you uh, see for some for someone who's new to check off? Um, what did you? Um, yeah, it's like um, uh, for me, uh, that's what I did when I uh, discovered check off. Is like uh, just install the CLI then uh, go inside the directory, uh, like a directory that I used to have, and then improve my Terraform uh, template. I'm, I'm a big fan of Terraform. So yeah, and I was like uh, really uh, happy to see how fast I can go like uh, like improving my Terraform template and how to better secure. Because the problem also, like you, you explained, if, if you have like a Terraform template, the idea behind it is to reuse it and reuse it. And then uh, you might end up with a lot of uh, ticket because if you need to fix, uh, if you discover that you have like a misconfiguration inside a Terraform template that you have been using know, for like 100 times, then you have to to, to fix like a 100 uh, protection issue, and that could be lead like mm -hmm. a lot of issues. So that's a bit, uh, uh, yeah. I was like really impressed by all the recommendation and how to improve the security on the. Uh, yeah, before to uh, before to uh, to push the configuration and so on. Okay, thank you. Um, we have one question, uh, one new question from Lorenzo. Uh, he's asking how the bridge group pricing plan works. Um, um, we are actually counting in the uh, pricing plan the number of code blocks, um, and we um, have. Um, something that is called credits. Uh, so we you buy uh, licenses through credits and then we count the code blocks against the number of credits. And um, for example, uh, 50 resources um, would uh, divide 50 by three and then you have the number of credits we are using. 
Any other questions? And uh, yeah, maybe as additional um, information, we don't count uh, execution of scans. We just count how how many how many number of resources uh, we are scanning, not the number of scans. So, for example, here in my Terraform the Kubernetes cluster, we have a container registry. We have a Azure uh, Kubernetes cluster, and here we have a role assignment that would be like three resources that would count as like a one credit uh, in terms of Prisma Cloud. But Checkoff is free. Well, I mean, it's free to use. Mm -hmm. It's open source. So you can use Checkoff without the, the bridge crew, uh, uh, program platform. Exactly. So do we have any other question? Yeah, thank you to Bruno to give me the, the solution to fix my error uh, with the, <laughs> the IP. <laughs> But uh, yeah. I should have copy paste uh, those and not try to. <laughs> okay. okay, cool. So then, uh, from my point of view, it's uh, thank you very much for your attention and uh, for joining our webinar today. Um, I would like to close the webinar, so a couple of minutes giving you back. And uh, Simon, thank you very much uh, for being the god today. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. Um, enjoying enjoy your day enjoy your evening thank you bye bye all right guys thank you very much for your time <laughs>